The idea of mining an asteroid millions of miles away in space is not a new concept. In fact, it first appeared in science fiction in 1898 in a story called Edison's Conquest of Mars. In that story, an armada is racing to attack Mars when they stumble across an asteroid outpost that is mining precious metals. Then fast forward to the mid 20th century and we start to see asteroid mining becoming a real topic of conversation, particularly around the economic benefits of it. In fact, Lyndon B. Johnson in 1962, right before he became president, he said, Someday we will be able to bring an asteroid containing billions of dollars worth of critically needed metals close to Earth to provide a vast source of mineral wealth to our factories. And even in the 1970s, MIT scientists were looking at the feasibility of sending a rocket to an asteroid to then haul it back to Earth so that we could mine it for iron and nickel, which were becoming harder to mine on Earth. So if we've been talking about this for over a century, why have we not done it yet? And better yet, is now the right time? What if, instead of mining Earth, we mined asteroids? Mining asteroids, as you can imagine, is very expensive and very hard. Not only do you have to have advanced technology to actually mine the asteroid, but you also have to get that technology there and bring all of those precious metals back. And for this to ever become a reality, it has to be cheaper than mining the same metals here on Earth. And really, that's the simplest answer to why have we not done it yet. Until just recently, the cost of spaceflight was astronomical. While it's still not cheap, reusable rockets like SpaceX's Falcon 9 have made it a lot cheaper since about the early 2010s, and we expect that trend to continue. At the same time, the cost of mining certain metals on Earth has gone up, particularly platinum group metals. Every piece of technology that runs our modern world, from the camera I'm recording this on, to the phone you might be watching this on, to medical devices that save lives, relies on these metals, so their demand is also increasing. But mining them is extremely energy intensive because they exist in very low concentrations here on Earth, sometimes just a few parts per billion in the ore. So we have to mine a massive amount of rock to get a tiny amount of metal. This is expensive and it's really bad for the environment. Not to mention, Earth has a finite amount of resources. We can't just get them forever. And on top of all of that, these metals exist in very specific regions in the world, which means that their supply chains are heavily influenced by geopolitical issues. So all of this to say, sooner rather than later, we need to find better ways to extract resources from Earth, we need to find more resources, and we need to better evenly distribute them around the globe. Well, asteroids don't have ecosystems. There's a pretty much near limitless supply of resources out there, and countries wouldn't necessarily be limited by the resources they have on their land. Weirdly enough, none of the metals we're talking about here are actually rare on Earth in the sense that they don't exist at all. There are plenty of them, we just can't really get to them. Over 4 billion years ago, when our Earth was still molten, our gravity sucked a lot of the heavy iron-loving elements into the core. This left the crust bare of elements like platinum and nickel and cobalt and iron until asteroids came and replenished those metals. Asteroids, on the other hand, have much more accessible and evenly distributed metals that exist in higher concentrations, so we wouldn't have to mine nearly as much raw material to get the same amount of metal. In fact, in platinum-rich asteroids, we think that there could be 10 to 20 times more platinum than in the open pit mines of South Africa, where most of the world's platinum comes from today. But let me put it into even crazier perspective, okay? One single 500-meter-wide platinum-rich asteroid could contain 175 times the global annual output of platinum, or one and a half times the entire known world reserves of platinum group metals. That's that's a big deal. So given all of this, asteroids sound like they could be part of the solution to our resource problems. But there are a lot of technological challenges to overcome before it can ever become a reality, if ever. Okay, remember how we talked about in the early 2010s, launch costs were really starting to drop? Well, two companies emerged around that time, Planetary Resources and Deep Space Industries, and they both wanted to make asteroid mining a reality for the first time ever. There was a ton of excitement. 
But unfortunately, neither of them was able to raise the funding needed and both were acquired roughly six years later by totally unrelated non-asteroid mining companies. But now, a new wave of companies has emerged and they think that now is the time, that the early 2010 boom was a little bit too early. These companies are betting that in the next decade or so, the market for asteroid resources will grow, driven by increased demand and increased environmental concerns. This would give them time to develop the technologies needed, which is far from simple. So let's take a look at a few of those. One major problem is that the surface of an asteroid is not reflective of what's inside of the asteroid. So a lot of times dust and debris will hide a lot of precious metals underneath the asteroid surface. But the opposite could also be true. We could see some precious metals on top and then get there and start mining and find nothing. NASA recently sent a mission called OSIRIS-REx to an asteroid called Bennu, and the whole point was to scoop up some rocks and bring them back to Earth so that we could study them. Based on all the observations we had of Bennu from afar, we thought that it was a solid rocky surface, but we show up to the asteroid and it's actually really loose gravel. Now, thankfully the technology that they had developed worked for that situation, but how unfortunate would it be if we design for one thing, but then we show up and it's completely different because our observations were wrong? That would be horrible. So the first step before we even send anything to an asteroid is to develop better technologies to scan them and really understand their true composition. Another issue is the sheer distance to these asteroids. So most of them exist in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, and many of those are rich in minerals like platinum and nickel and iron. Actually, NASA thinks that the total value of all the minerals in the asteroid belt is well over 700 quintillion dollars. 700 quintillion dollars, I can't even fathom that. That's great and all, but we can't really access that with today's propulsion technology because it takes four years or more to get to the asteroid belt. But there are near Earth asteroids too, ones that, as the name implies, come closer to Earth. That's actually where NASA sent its OSIRIS-REx mission that we talked about earlier. It went to an asteroid called Bennu, and that only took about two years. But there are way fewer near Earth asteroids than there are in the asteroid belt. They have crazy erratic orbits. They come by Earth only periodically, and they're really irregularly shaped. So they're not great candidates for mining. So the asteroid belt is definitely the most lucrative place for any asteroid mining business, especially if the propulsion advancements that we're expecting in the next decade or so actually come to fruition. But let's say we figured all of that out. We know exactly what asteroid, we know exactly what's in it, and we have arrived, we are ready to mine. Well, mining it is a very hard endeavor. So imagine trying to land mining equipment on a very fast moving, spinning, irregularly shaped object in space, hundreds of millions, if not billions of miles away from home, and then you have to autonomously mine it because there's no humans there, right? That's not easy. And once you've mined the asteroid, you have yet another dilemma. Do you process the materials in space at the asteroid, or do you send raw materials back to Earth to process here? One requires more technology, one is cheaper, neither option is straightforward. And then of course you also have the option that the 1970s MIT scientists were discussing of using a rocket to pull or push the asteroid back to Earth. Like there's so many options and none of them are straightforward and all of them have pros and cons. But we really need to put this all into perspective because humanity has only ever brought back 127 grams of asteroid material ever, ever. And the missions to collect that material costs hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars and took decades. To go from tiny sample return missions where we're at right now to full scale mining that can take over the mining industry on earth is a huge leap. How do we bridge that gap? Well, in the near term, human space exploration could actually be the answer. So as humans venture to the moon and Mars and beyond, we're gonna need a whole bunch of things like water and oxygen and even rocket fuel. Shipping that from Earth is not practical or cost effective. So what if instead we mined asteroids for their water, turned that into drinking water, split it into oxygen and hydrogen for rocket fuel, and converted it into oxygen for breathing? We could also mine asteroids for the raw material to put into a 3D printer to build habitats. This would be far more sustainable for human space exploration, and it would also eliminate any environmental concerns of mining Earth's resources for space exploration. But I think it goes farther than that, okay? 
Right now, to be honest with you, I have no idea how any of the off-Earth resources markets are going to shape up over the coming decade or so. But NASA and other agencies are committed to setting up a permanent base on the moon and eventually Mars, and they want to do so by mining resources. Like, that is part of the plan. So mining asteroids, or even just the moon, could provide valuable near-term opportunities to develop the technologies needed to mine asteroids for metals to use back on Earth. If that market doesn't exist quite yet, this technology advancement for a completely different reason could be the key to opening up that market a lot sooner. And the timing couldn't be better, because as industries like electronics and clean energy and electric vehicles continue to grow, demand for these metals is skyrocketing. Like, it's kind of getting out of hand how many metals we need. But the issues aren't going anywhere. Again, we have limited resources that are very hard, expensive, and environmentally harmful to mine. We have to find alternative solutions to meet the growing demand of things like platinum group metals. And I absolutely think that we should see if asteroid mining could work. And who knows, maybe we find something rare in these asteroids that we don't even know we need yet, just like the digital aid spur demand for cobalt and lithium. Investing in asteroid mining now could ensure that we have access to those resources when we need it in the future.